questions, Christian Rao, the Honorable Leader of the Opposition. The news that the House of Commons paid homage to a Nazi Waffen-SS officer here at the House of Commons has upset the world and embarrassed Canada. It hampered, hindered the victims of the Holocaust and gave a tool of propaganda to Russia. The Prime Minister and only the Prime Minister is responsible for the excess, success of international visitors here in Canada. Will he take responsibility for this massive issue that he helped to cause? The government House Leader, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Like every member here in this House, I was extremely disappointed with this situation. And personally, as someone of, who was a descendant of a Jewish survivor, I was very disappointed, like everyone here. And as the Leader of the Opposition well knows, and as you mentioned, Mr. Mr. Speaker, it was your decision and yours alone. Neither the government or the Ukrainian delegation knew about this ahead of time, and it's something that we are all very disappointed by. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the question was for the Prime Minister, because indeed it is the Prime Minister's sole responsibility to guarantee the diplomatic success of major world leaders who come to this country. It is the Prime Minister whose government is responsible for both security and diplomatic vetting of everyone that comes in close proximity of a foreign leader on Canadian soil, particularly a foreign leader who is at war. The government has now admitted that they vetted everyone who was in attendance uh, that day. Will the Prime Minister apologize for having vetted this individual and letting him come anyway? The Honourable Government Mr. Speaker, like all members of this chamber, I am incredibly disappointed in the fact that uh, this individual was invited, as you yourself, Mr. Speaker, have confirmed by you, was recognized in the gallery. I found out, just like every other member in this House at that time, that this individual was present. Uh, this is deeply embarrassing for us as parliamentarians, as Canadians, and it is something that I think all of us take extremely seriously, and I would ask my honourable colleagues not to politicize this moment. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister is responsible. He is in Ottawa today. He can get on his feet and answer for his massive diplomatic embarrassment and shame. Stand up. That minister admitted that the government vetted every single person that was here for the speech. That was the job of the government, which has an entire security and diplomatic apparatus set up for that purpose. Will he finally take responsibility for his latest embarrassment and apologize to Canadians for this massive attack? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, as a descendant of Jewish Holocaust survivors, I am personally very hurt by the fact that this chamber recognized this individual. And I am sure that everyone feels the same way in this chamber. The Parliamentary Protective Service had the appropriate screening in place to ensure the security of last Friday's event, and that is what I was referring to, Mr. Speaker. But what I can continue to say is that we all must take this seriously because it is hurting many communities. Honourable uh, Leader of the Opposition. It is the job of the Government of Canada, the Privy Council Office, which is the Prime Minister's personal department, the Prime Minister's security forces in the RCMP, to vet every single person that comes within proximity of a high-profile foreign war leader who is involved in a very difficult conflict right now. It was the job of the Prime Minister to protect that foreign leader from this massive embarrassment. If the Prime Minister failed to have vetting in place, then that in itself 
is a massive act of incompetence. Will he yeah. take responsibility and apologize for that? The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I would again ask the Leader of the Opposition to not politicize this issue. He knows just as well as everyone else in this chamber that the decision to invite this individual was yours, Mr. Speaker, and yours alone, that you did not inform the government or the Ukrainian delegation that you were inviting him or that you would recognize him. You made that public yesterday. The Leader of the Opposition knows that, and I would ask that he sticks to the facts. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, very good. Leader of the Opposition. Well, if the Prime Minister is so proud of how he conducted himself, he would be on the floor in the House of Commons today. That's right. Instead of hiding under a rock. That's right. Under a rock. Under a rock. Canadians are sick and tired of a Prime Minister. Honourable members, that uh, the presence in the gallery, all MPs have duties in the chamber and outside. I just want to remind them that referring to their presence or absence is not uh, allowed in the rules. The Honourable uh, Opposition Leader, please continue. Mr. Speaker, Canadians are sick and tired of a Prime Minister who never takes responsibilities That's for right. the things that happen, happen under his watch, whether it's the record high inflation or interest rates or the doubling of housing costs or the constant international embarrassments. He always finds someone else to throw under the bus. Right. Are you that person? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I know the Leader of the Opposition doesn't want to rely on the facts, but the facts in this situation are that the government had no prior knowledge that this individual was being invited, nor that he would be recognized. And if they go back and recall what happened on Friday, they will see that it was indeed the Speaker of the House that recognize this individual. We, will all, we were all caught off guard. It's dear, it's deeply embarrassing to this parliament, but to Canada, and I ask that we all deal with this you responsibly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable de la Member for La Prairie. Mr. Speaker, there are serious consequences to what happened in this chamber Friday. The world's media are talking about it, and already the Russian media is using this to spread propaganda. In a war, this kind of propaganda can encourage the recruitment of Russian soldiers to go to the front against Ukraine. An event like this can harm the search for international support. It's dramatic because we're in the world of war, and the repercussions are real. What does the government intend to do to repair the damage caused by Friday's event? The Honourable Government House Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague for his question. As I said, this incident is very painful for everyone here in this chamber and, of course, for all Canadians, particularly Canadians who have families that were touched, affected by the Holocaust, namely Jewish communities and those in Eastern Europe. This is something that is very painful, and it was really something that I was personally disappointed by, and I would ask everyone to work responsibly. Thank you. The Honourable Member for La Prairie. Mr. Speaker, I'm talking about the harmful effects of this effect for the Ukrainian war effect, but we mustn't forget our fellow citizens of Jewish faith and all those who were victims of the Nazis during World War II. If there are still executioners alive and there are still victims, our thoughts go out to them. We must show that this House and this government do not take Friday's event lightly for all those affected in one way or another. What will the government do to repair this tragic blunder? The Honourable Government House Leader, as I said, everyone in this House is deeply hurt by what took place last Friday. We were all taken by surprise, and it's something that it was totally unacceptable. There are communities across Canada, Jewish communities, and Eastern European communities for whom Holocaust and World War II were particularly painful. As a descendant of a Holocaust survival, survivor, I, something I take very seriously, and I think this 
is uh, time the for Honourable everyone Member to reflect. Vancouver East. What happened last Friday never should have happened. Now turning to another crisis. The last 30 years has demonstrated that successive liberal and conservative governments' market-driven approach to housing has failed Canadians. Housing serves as a social good. It should not just be treated as a commodity for greater profits. People need housing that they can afford, and waiving the GST for new rentals is not enough. Will the Prime Minister commit to creating an acquisition fund for the nonprofit sector to help stop the loss of low-cost rentals to poverty? Hearing landlords. Here, here. The Honourable Minister for Housing. Mr. Speaker, I thank my honourable colleague for her question and for her advocacy for non-market housing. We need to continue to do more, and we know that all of the, though the recent measure to remove the GST from apartment construction is going to have an enormous impact, it's not enough on its own. We're going to continue to make investments in low-cost financing to build more homes that ordinary people can actually afford. We've advanced programs in the past and will continue to in the future to directly subsidize the kinds of homes that low-income people need to build. We don't have a monopoly on good ideas, Mr. Speaker. We're willing to take feedback from members of all parties in this house. I look forward to continuing my collaboration with the member opposite in that regard. Well, member for Vancouver East. Well then, commit to creating an acquisition fund. Now, let me say this. The Liberal plan is not working. The Minister should know that relying on market forces will not solve the problem. Yeah. That's what the Liberals and conservative, Conservatives did for the last 30 years. Look where it got us. The average rent in Canada is now over $2,100 a month. In Vancouver, it's over $3,000. Time for bold action. Will the Minister commit to building $2 units of social housing to meet the needs of the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Honourable Minister of Housing. Mr. Speaker, I agree with the member opposite that uh, building market housing is not enough, but we must also increase the supply of market housing in the market. Mr. Speaker, we need to encourage the construction of homes for low-income Canadians. We need to encourage the construction of homes for middle-class Canadians. As we move forward with a measure that's going to allow people to build more market-based homes, we're also advancing, advancing measures that are going to disproportionately have a positive impact on builders that are seeking to build homes for low-income families outside of the traditional market. There is no silver bullet to the housing crisis. We will pull every lever at our disposal to make things right. The Honourable Member for Charleswood St. James, Assiniboia, Henningley. On Friday, a Nazi received a standing ovation in this house. Today is Yom Kippur. The Jewish community, my community, is horrified. Only one office in the country is responsible for vetting visitors to this place the Prime Minister's office. When the Ukrainian President, a head of state, addresses this House during a time of war, the Prime Minister's office is responsible for security. Full stop. This scandal is entirely on the Prime Minister's office. Did they vet this Nazi and not care, or not vet him, and, com and, and are completely incompetent? Okay. Yeah. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, as a Canadian of Jewish origin, I've shared very clearly with this House on several occasions how disturbing this event is for me personally, but I also know for Canadians who are Jewish right across this country, and particularly today on Yom Kippur, the holiest day in the Jewish calendar, the Day of Atonement, as we prepare for the new year. This is particularly disturbing. However, I do have to correct my honourable colleague in the sense that the government was not aware that this individual was invited. It was completely the prerogative of the Speaker. It was his decision. And and we need to make sure that the facts remain on the table. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very good. The Honourable Member for Charleswood St. James, Assiniboia, Headingley. Shame on that member and that government for not taking responsibility. <laughs> the Prime Minister has the massive security apparatus of the state at his disposal, and yet a Nazi was honoured in this place. I can't believe I'm even uttering these words, Mr. Speaker. Canada has been embarrassed around the world. Shame on this government for bringing shame on this chamber. Mm -hmm. My late grandparents are turning in their graves. A simple Google search would have revealed this person's background. And so again, did they vet this Nazi and simply not care, or did they not vet the, this Nazi and are completely incompetent? Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker, I would again ask the honourable colleague to stick to the facts. 
because we know and he knows because you have stated publicly and in this chamber that it was your decision to invite this individual, your decision alone to recognize him in the chamber. We were all caught off guard on Friday. Everyone in this chamber stood because we trusted the speaker to know who this was. But at the same time, we must all take this seriously and we must not politicize this. Communities are hurting and we need to be there to be united at this time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Or for Regina Capel. I was speaker when the government changed the law to ensure that the House of Commons Security reported to the government. That was done for very specific reasons, Mr. Speaker, one of which was the fact that the House of Commons itself doesn't have the resources to do comprehensive vetting and background checks. That is why the change was made. Nobody believes that it's up to your office to do comprehensive background checks. There's only one entity yeah. that has access to CSIS information and RCMP intelligence. How did the government let someone who fought for the Waffen SS into this chamber? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I have tremendous respect for my colleague opposite. He was the speaker. He's the House Leader now. He knows how this chamber operates. He knows that the speaker has prerogative for who they invite to the speaker's gallery. The Parliamentary Protective Service followed all screening protocols to ensure the security of the event on Friday. Nevertheless, neither the government nor the Ukrainian delegation were aware of that individual's presence until he was recognized by the speaker. Those are the facts. Thank you. Yeah. The Honourable Member for Regina Capel. Mr. Speaker, it's the government that is politicizing this issue for refusing to accept their responsibility. There is only one group of individuals who have control over who has access to a foreign head of state. A head of state who is fighting for his country's life against an illegal invasion by Russia. And the Prime Minister has a duty of care for that entire visit. Now. Now the government house leader is trying to change her tune and say, yes, there was information gathered, list was gathered, but vetting wasn't done. What's the point of gathering a list of invitees if they're not doing any background yeah. checks? Yeah. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, let me continue to lay out the facts for this chamber. It is a fact that that individual was not granted access to neither the President of Ukraine nor the Prime Minister of this country. He was specifically invited by the Speaker of the House, who did not make either the Government of Canada or the Ukrainian delegation aware. We all found out at the same time when he was recognized in the chamber. We are all deeply embarrassed by this. It has embarrassed Canada, and we must reiterate our strong support and allies for Ukraine, Ukrainian Canadians, as well as Jewish communities. The Honourable Member for Charbourg, au Saint Charles. Mr. Speaker, last Friday we had the privilege of welcoming the President of Ukraine here in the House. Unfortunately, amongst the special guests was a Nazi. When a large-scale event takes place, the PMO has the duty to be aware of it and to take control of it. This scandal is ent scandal is entirely owing to the PMO. It's one of two things. Either they did background checks and didn't see a problem with this individual, or the PMO didn't do a background check and it's entirely incompetent. Which is it? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to repeat for my honourable colleague what I've already said, because these are the facts and this is the truth. Neither the government nor the Ukrainian delegation knew ahead of time that this individual was invited or that the speaker would recognize them during their speech. We are all very disturbed um, and disappointed by this event. It is something that affects parliamentarians, Canada, and of course our reputation internationally is something everyone has to take seriously. The Honourable Member for Charbourg au Saint-Charles. Mr. Speaker, all members in this House expect the government to do research on guests here at the Parliament, but after welcoming 
Nazi, responsable du meurtre de milliers de Juifs, mais confiance était tout jamais héroïque. Quel autre de non seulement accueillir une telle personne, mais de lui faire des éloges. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a un, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre. Il y en a, c'est qu'il vient de la guerre
in these difficult situations. We have and will continue to make sure that we uh, support the Agricultural Clean Technology Program and the Climate uh, Solution Programs. This all helps uh, with the environment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, member for Sturgeon River Parkland. Mr. Speaker, the inclusion of an SS member in Parliament during President Zelensky's speech is unacceptable and embarrassing. But what is further embarrassing is an admission from this government that they did not do proper background checks on everyone that was in this Parliament. President Zelensky is a target of death from the Russian regime. His security in Canada should be our highest priority. The minister in charge of parliamentary security must be held to account. For if a Nazi was allowed in this Parliament, how can we know that this government took all precautions necessary to ensure the protection of President Zelensky? Mr. Speaker, as I have already stated, the Parliamentary Protective Service followed all screening protocols to ensure the security of last Friday's event. I agree with the member opposite in that it was profoundly embarrassing for Parliament and for Canada that this individual was both invited and recognized. However, as that member knows, and as all members know, it was the Speaker of this chamber that decided to invite this individual and recognize him. We were all caught off guard and we are all hurting because of it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Sel Selkirk Interlake Eastman. Ukraine has survived multiple genocides at the hands of both the Soviets and the Nazis. The Holodomor, the Holocaust, the Sigler neck of the Crimean Tatars. So it's shocking that a self-professed Nazi was allowed into this chamber by the Liberals and officially recognized by the Speaker during the state visit of the President of Ukraine. The Liberals abdicated their duty of care responsibilities to President Zelensky during his state visit. So will the Prime Minister officially apologize to President Zelensky for his incompetence and indeed apologize to all the people of Ukraine? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, as I have stated, I think that episode on Friday was one of profound embarrassment for parliamentarians and for all Canadians. As has been stated clearly, the Parliamentary Protective Services have did all of the required security protocols to ensure the security of the event. However, neither the government nor the Ukrainian delegation was aware this individual would be present in the gallery, nor that he would be recognized until such a time as the speaker did that. The speaker has made that public and clear, and we were owed and received an apology. The Honourable Member for Selkirk, Interlake Eastman. Well, this is more than an embarrassment. It's disgusting. Zelensky is Jewish who lost family in the Holocaust. The Ukrainian defense minister, Rustem Umerov, is a Muslim Crimean Tatar who was born in the Gulags. I'm angry that this liberal incompetence is playing right into the hands of Russian disinformation. Due to the liberals' ne ne negligence, the government is eroding support for Ukraine against Russia's illegal invasion. So will the prime minister accept responsibility for embarrassing Canada and undermining Ukraine on the world stage. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, as a descendant of a Jewish Holocaust survivor, this is something that is profoundly disturbing and upsetting to me, as it is to everyone in Canada whose family has been impacted by the Holocaust, and indeed everyone around the world. It is not lost on me that the president of Ukraine is Jewish, who also suffered the same way as my family did. But I will reiterate to the member opposite, this was not the government's decision, and we had no prior knowledge for this. It was a decision made by the Speaker of the House. He has apologized. We are all owed that apology because it was profoundly embarrassing and disturbing. The uh, Honourable Member for Edmonton, Griesbach. In Edmonton, over 33,000 households pay more in rent than they can afford. Meanwhile, corporate landlords like Boardwalk and Main Street are jacking up rents right across our city and forcing people out onto the streets. The Liberals and Conservatives' plan is to buddy up and cozy up with big real estate CEOs. The NDP's plan is to build more homes that people can actually afford. Will the government commit to building non-market homes and stopping renovations so Canadians can keep a roof over their head. 
The Honourable Minister of Housing. Speaker, I thank my honourable colleague for his question. I would point out that there's actually quite a bit that he and I may agree on. We are going to continue to make the kinds of investments that are going to support low-income families, including in the city of Edmonton and across the country. But it's important that we also advance measures that are going to help increase the supply for middle-class households in this country. When we add more supply to the market, we can actually bring down the cost of homes across the country that people can afford. I'm pleased to work with the honourable member on non-market housing solutions, and we're going to continue to advance measures that will build homes for middle-class families as well. Honourable Member for Vancouver Kingsway. Mr. Speaker, Canadian children have been going to school hungry for years, and skyrocketing grocery bills are making things worse. Yet, Canada is the only G7 country without a national school food program. New Democrats have been calling for one for years, and despite their promises, the Liberals have only delayed action and disappointed families. Mr. Speaker, children are going hungry on the Liberals' watch. Why isn't this government delivering a national school food program to help our kids learn? Mm -hmm. here, here. The Honourable Minister for Health. And while we've taken historic action to reduce child poverty uh, and see child poverty at one of its lowest levels, uh, it's with hundreds of thousands of children being lifted out of uh, poverty since uh, Stephen Harper's government, it is not enough. The reality is making sure that every child has a good meal is something we want to work with provinces and territories on. That's why we're actively developing a national food policy, working in collaborations with provinces and territories. We're taking action on marketing to kids. We're taking action on front of pack labeling. We're making sure that we're doing everything that we can to put the nutrition of our children first. Honourable Member for Kitchener, Conestoga. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. One of the core responsibilities of any government is to keep Canadians safe and to represent their best interests on the global stage. While here at home, we see the government acting on Canadians' priorities through things like the Affordable, Affordable Housing and Groceries Act, which we're debating today. There's also a need to work with global partners to act against existential threats like climate change, the weaponization of information, and the threat to democracy by a growing authoritarianism. Can the Minister of Foreign Affairs outline the work done by her and her colleagues at the UN General Assembly last week to demonstrate Canadian leadership on tackling these critical issues. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Foreign Affairs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Canadians know that more than ever, what is happening in the world has an impact on their day-to-day -day lives. And Canada is definitely stepping up on the world stage. Last week at the UN, I co-hosted an arbitrary detention summit along with Secretary Blinken and Michael Kovrick. At this point, the declaration on arbitrary detention is now signed by 75 countries. We also launched a new declaration along with the Netherlands to fight this information by states signed by the UK and US. This is global leadership, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The Honourable Member for South Surrey, White Rock. Mr. Speaker, as the Chief Opposition Whip, my office was required to provide a list of names and contact information in advance of President Zelensky's address. That information was shared with the Protocol Office and Parliamentary Protective Services, who report directly to the, B the RCMP, who report to the Minister of Public Safety on operational matters. Does the Prime Minister expect Canadians to believe that he invited a world leader currently at war to our Parliament and he didn't vet the list? Yeah. The Mr. Speaker, the government House Leader has made clear uh, our government's disappointment with the events of Friday. All parliamentarians were taken by surprise with this particular individual being invited in the gallery. The opposition whip knows very well that the Parliamentary Protective Service reports to the two speakers, the Speaker of the Senate and the Speaker of the House of Commons. And Mr. Speaker, to pretend otherwise is simply to distance oneself from the facts. The Honourable Member for South Surrey, White Rock. Mr. Speaker, I'm dealing with facts, and those are not the facts. The Liberals don't get it. The Prime Minister either knew or ought to have known who was invited to attend. He embarrassed a foreign leader of a country at war and every parliamentarian here. With the resources of RCMP and CSIS at his fingertips, basic due diligence was ignored. Will the Prime Minister take responsibility and explain to Canadians why a Nazi was given a hero's introduction in this House under his watch? Yeah. Mr. Speaker, 
the member opposite knows because she's heard it from you this morning and me several times today that it was not the Prime Minister who either invited this individual or recognized him. She acknowledged that he was recognized during the Speaker's remarks because the facts of the matter are that this individual was invited by the Speaker of the House, was recognized by the Speaker of the House, and did this without informing either the Government of Canada or the Ukrainian delegation. This is profoundly embarrassing to us all, and we all need to take this seriously. The Honourable Member for Lethbridge. On Friday, a Nazi was given a, uh, not only a seat in the chamber, but also given a very warm and honouring welcome. Mm -hmm. Now, this never should have happened. In fact, a list of all guests was given to this government well ahead of time and was thoroughly vetted. Yet somehow this individual was celebrated. So does the Liberal government truly expect Canadians to believe that they really had no clue? Mr. Speaker, I have clearly laid the facts on the table several times today. And in fact, the only person who invited this individual and decided to recognize them was the Speaker of the House. The Parliamentary Protective Service followed all security protocols to ensure the security of the event. However, I agree with the member opposite. This should have never happened. This is profoundly embarrassing, profoundly disappointing to all members in this House mm -hmm. and to all Canadians. And to that, you know, we stand with all Canadian communities that are impacted and, of course, with Ukraine. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Lethbridge. There's just no way that this is correct. Mm -hmm. You have a world leader whose country is at war. He came to Parliament as a state guest. He was granted some of the strictest security that has ever been granted to a world leader prior to him. And yet that individual was here with a Nazi in his presence. And this government would like me and other Canadians to believe that somehow this individual was not thoroughly vetted, that somehow this list was not viewed by the Prime Minister's office. That's what this side of the House, that side of the House, the Prime Minister would like. The Honourable <laughs> Government Pikesby. In fact, the Speaker has actually already clarified and uh, expressed that this was his decision alone, that he did not inform the government or the Ukrainian delegation that this was entirely his decision. Mr. Speaker, I cannot you know, force the Conservative members to believe what the facts are. I can only put them on the table as they are. They have been clearly outlined and we will continue to stand by them because that is the truth. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. L'honorable député de Damion Lamitis Matan Matapédia. Le ministre de l'Environnement se pavanait à New York et avait le front de faire la leçon au Québec en matière de lutte au changement climatique. Son but il n'était pas à des belles paroles. Non, il agissait. Comme un contre les libéraux lors du sommet de l'emblissement climatique de l'ONU, ils ont ouvert des milliers de kilomètres supplémentaires de milieux marins au projet d'exploration pétrolière. C'est pour la protection de la biodiversité et de l'urgence climatique qui vont empêcher le gouvernement de vendre du pétrole. Non, monsieur. Comment vont-ils prendre l'avenir de la planète au sérieux? L'honorable ministre de l'Environnement. Je remercie ma collègue pour sa question. J'étais honoré la semaine dernière d'accompagner le Premier ministre alors que le Canada est le seul grand pays producteur de pétrole qui a été invité au sommet sur l'ambition climatique du secrétaire général des Nations Unies. Pourquoi? Parce qu'entre 2019 et 2021, nous sommes le pays qui a la meilleure performance en matière de réduction des émissions de gaz à effet de serre. C'est l'équivalent de 11 millions de voitures qu'on a retirées de sur nos routes, Monsieur le Président. Nous sommes le seul pays du G20 à avoir éliminé les subventions aux combustibles fossiles deux fois plus tôt que prévu. Et nous sommes le seul grand pays producteur de pétrole à mettre en place un plafond sur les émissions de gaz à effet de serre. C'est pour ça que nous avons été invités à New York, M. le Président. Honorable député d'Avignon, la bêtise matin, Matapédia. Monsieur le Président, les coupes de champagne devaient se remplir au Congrès mondial du pétrole en Alberta. Quelle merveilleuse nouvelle que l'intention du Canada de doubler la production de pétrole de terre neuve d'ici 2030. 200 millions de barils par année. Le ministre de l'Environnement savait que son Canada décidait d'être le leader 
The government has decided to be an unrivaled leader in the expansion of fossil fuels while the planet burns. We are dangerously moving from irresponsible territory to intentional harm territory. How can the minister, former head of Greenpeace and Iquitaire, look at himself in the mirror? How can he agree to do the bidding of oil companies? The Honorable Minister. Thank you. And I urge my colleague to read the speech of my colleague and friend, the Minister of Natural Resources, who said that in today's world, if we want to fight climate changes and we use 120 million barrels a year, in a carbon neutral net zero world, we need to decrease our dependence on oil and gas and fossil fuels, especially, and that's what we're doing in Canada. Canada in partnership with all of our partners around the world. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Mégantic-Clérable. The Prime Minister has the responsibility to vet his cabinet and his bureau. No one is supposed to believe that no one in the PMO, no one at Foreign Affairs, no one at Public Safety, no one in the Canada Protocol Office was involved in the process of allowing a Nazi to be invited to have the opportunity to stand here a few après la dernière attaque terroriste au Parlement, la GRC s'est vue confier la supervision complète de notre sécurité. Comment le Premier ministre peut-il nier sa responsabilité et prétendre qu'il ne savait rien? No one, none of them knew that he would be recognized by the President of the House. As I have said many times, this initiative was an initiative of the House Speaker. The House Speaker elected to invite this person and recognize him. It was incredibly painful for parliamentarians who were present and who were very surprised by that decision. This was very painful for all Canadians who were affected by the Holocaust. The we are all incredibly hurt, Mr. Speaker, by the Prime Minister's lack of responsibility. By negligence or by incompetence, he allowed a Nazi to be recognized in this House. The Protocol Office of Canada is under Global Affairs Canada, and the mandate of that office is to vet official visits, visits of foreign dignitaries, and visits of guests of the government. How can you claim that the Prime Minister was not aware of this because the entire government machinery is involved in every single detail of visits like this. For example, like the visit of uh, the, uh, President Zelensky. The Honorable Government House Leader, Mr. Speaker, my colleague knows because he heard you this morning and read your statement yesterday. He knows, as you clarified, that it was your initiative and yours alone. He knows that you did not warn the government that you were going to invite that individual or recognize him. We are all deeply hurt. We are hurt as parliamentarians and as Canadians. And those who are hurt are communities across the country are hurt by this decision, which was made by the House Speaker and the House Speaker alone. Last Friday, a member of the 14th Boffin Grenadier Division of the Nazi SS was celebrated in the presence of President Zelensky. No one believes that the government wouldn't see the list of attendees when a foreign leader attends this chamber. Canada's reputation, damaged. This chamber's reputation, damaged. Our valiant Canadian World War II veterans, shocked and humiliated. Jewish Canadians, horrified. Russia couldn't be happier. Does the Liberal government really expect Canadians to believe they didn't know a Nazi was in this house. Here, 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 here. The Honourable Government. Well, Mr. Speaker, I can only share the facts and the truth, and the truth and the facts are that no, the government didn't know that this individual was invited, nor that he was going to be recognized by the Speaker of this House. As the member opposite heard the Speaker say earlier today, this is an individual that was from his riding, he decided to recognize him, 
He did not inform either the government or the Ukrainian delegation. This has caused profound hurt and embarrassment to this chamber, to Canada, and to Canadians from so many different backgrounds, Jewish Canadians, Canadians of Eastern European descent, Ukrainian Canadians, and of course, to the President of Ukraine. De de Sudbury. The Honourable Member for Sudbury. Today is Franco-Ontarian Day. It's a day to celebrate Francophone culture, art, traditions, and people in this beautiful province. The French language is a vital part of our culture in Sudbury, Ontario, and across the country. And it's our responsibility to protect it. Can the Minister of Employment, Workforce Development, and Official Languages provide an update on what our government is doing to support the Franco-Ontarian community? Honorable Minister. The Honorable Minister. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je Thank tiens à remercier l'honorable député de Sudbury de sa question et de son incroyable plaidoyer en faveur de la communauté franco-ontarienne avec notre nouveau plan d'action sur les langues officielles. Nous soutenons les communautés de langues officielles partout au pays avec 4,1 milliards de dollars pour soutenir les organismes, l'éducation, les communautés et plus encore. Qu'il s'agisse des francophones, des francophiles ou des franco-curieurs, notre gouvernement soutiendra toujours. La langue française en Ontario, Ontario et partout au pays. Bonne journée pour la francophonie franco-ontarienne. The Honourable Member for Barry Innocent. Look, I've uh, sat here during question period and, like all Canadians, have listened to the Liberals deflect and place blame on the Speaker for a Nazi being allowed in this chamber. Like we've seen with so many others, the Prime Minister and apparently his House Leader will go to any length to ruin personal and professional reputations to protect himself. After eight years, our nation is living through a rotating loop of international humiliation that lays solely at the Prime Minister's feet. Why won't, why won't the Prime Minister accept responsibility and apologize to not only this House, our nation, our international partners, and those who have been re-traumatized? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, uh, my honourable colleague, heard your statement this morning. He knows very well that this was your decision and your decision alone to invite this individual to recognize him in the gallery without informing the government, without informing the Ukrainian delegation. We are profoundly hurt by this. We are profoundly embarrassed by this. And I would ask that the Conservative colleagues pay attention to the facts, rely on the facts, and treat this matter with the seriousness that it deserves, because there are communities across the country that are hurting and politicizing it publicly. The Honourable Member for Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. Time and time again, this Prime Minister and his Liberal House Leader say, I had no idea, it didn't involve me. Time and time again, this Liberal Prime Minister fails in his duties to Canadians and has someone else take the fall. This week, it looks like he's going to come to you, Speaker, and ask you to leave and to take the garbage out with you on the way out. Is that really what this government wants to show to Canadians? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, again, that Honourable colleague would have seen your statement yesterday heard your apology in the House today, where the Speaker confirmed that this was his decision and his decision alone to invite this individual from his riding, to acknowledge him in the gallery. We were all caught off guard by this. We all stood and applauded because we were led to believe that this was an individual who he was not. And that is something that hurts all of us and embarrasses all of us. But there was no prior knowledge from the government. Member for Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands, and Rideau Lakes. Canadians expect better than incompetence from their government, and that's what they continue to get. Dozens of questions for this Liberal Prime Minister, and he refuses to stand up and take responsibility for an international embarrassment that lays solely at his feet. And his government House Leader, these Liberals continue to stand, and they want someone else, they want the Speaker, to take the fall. Canadians deserve better. We know that. Why don't these Liberals know that Canadians deserve better? Right. The Honourable Government House Leader. 
Mr. Speaker, again, I would invite my colleagues on the Conservative benches to rely on the facts that you have laid out, both in a statement as well as in an apology to this House, that it was you who decided to invite this individual, that you decided to recognize him in this place without informing the government or the Ukrainian delegation or indeed any parliamentarian. I think we are all profoundly hurt and embarrassed by this as are Canadians, and we need to take this seriously, not politicize it, because we need to make sure that we are bringing Canadians together during this difficult time. The Honourable Member for Vaughan Woodbridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My constituents in Vaughan Woodbridge are feeling the pressure of increased housing costs and grocery prices. This summer, I heard them loud and clear. From the skilled trades workers who are building our homes and critical infrastructure, to the workers creating Made in Canada products in the manufacturing sector and the seniors who help build this country. That's why I was pleased to see our government introduce Bill C-56, the Affordable Housing and Groceries Act, as the next phase of our government's plan to bring down the cost of living for Canadians. Can the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance tell my residents what this bill would do? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Deputy Question. Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank uh, the MP for Vaughan Woodbridge for his hard work for his constituents and all Canadians. Mr. Speaker, Canadians need more homes built faster and they need affordable groceries. Bill C-56, which the government tabled last week, will help to provide both. With this bill, we are removing the GST from the construction of rental housing to build more homes faster. We are empowering Canada's Competition Bureau to help small grocers compete, and we are demanding CEOs of Canada's largest grocers present a plan to stabilize prices. We're going to continue to move forward with a serious plan to help Canadians. Honourable Member for Skeena, Bulkley Valley. Mr. Speaker, there is now a backlog of over 57,000 air passenger complaints before the Canadian Transportation Agency. Canadian travellers have had their lives upended. Many are out thousands of dollars. And for those who have managed to navigate a complex complaint process, they're having to wait well over a year to have their complaints heard. Now, this government is on its third attempt to fix this debacle. Will the minister apologize to Canadian travellers for failing so utterly to stand up to the big airlines? Minister for Transportation. Mr. Speaker, our government was the first to protect the rights of travellers, the first one, and we will make our passenger rights regime even stronger by making compensation mandatory for disruptions, putting the onus on airlines, not passengers, and ensuring improved and standards level of service during any disruptions, Mr. Speaker. We've also invested in the Cane Transportation Agency so that it can resolve the cases faster. It will be much faster, Mr. Speaker. L'honorable député de Richemont-Arthabasca. Richemont-Arthabasca. By addressing this situation, we will be encouraging people to buy healthier food at lower prices, and we will be putting an end to the injustice that makes SMEs compete unfairly against multinationals. This is a direct way to help Canadian families so that it costs them less to eat better. Does the government intend to make a change, take action? This Premier Minister. Deputy Prime Minister. On peut, on peut faire ensemble. On peut faire ensemble. We can answer together. Monsieur le Président, on Mr. Speaker. Sérieux, we take the health of all Canadians seriously. We especially take seriously the health of our children. Our tax system is based on data as is our health system. We will always implement health laws and tax laws based on data and based on the advice of experts. Thank you. That's all the time that we have for question period. I understand we have been, uh, there have been discussions among representatives of all parties in the House that uh, there is an agreement to observe a moment of silence in honour of the fallen RCMP officer in Coquitlam, British Columbia.
I understand the uh, government house leader is rising on the point of order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to ask for unanimous consent to adopt the following motion. That notwithstanding any standing order, special order, or usual practice of the House, the recognition made by the Speaker of the House of an individual present in the galleries during the joint, joint address to Parliament by His Excellency Volodymyr Zelensky be struck from the appendix of the House of Commons debates of Thursday, September 21, 2023, and from any House multimedia recording. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, I guess we have to go to the, uh, we'll ask about unanimous consent, then go to it. Uh, all those opposed to the Honourable uh, Ministers moving the motion will please say nay. We don't, we don't have unanimous consent. Uh, we, have, we have another order, order, order. We have another uh, point on uh, the, the, the Honourable Member for Charleswood, St. James, and Sinaboya, Headingley, and then we'll go to Toronto Danforth. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's important when we say no to this motion that is, is on, such an important, on such an important matter that we state our rationale. It would be Order! Order! Order. If I can ask the Honourable Member to start over. Order! Order. If I can ask the honourable member to start over, I didn't hear what he started with or what he was saying, and determine. And I want to hear what he has to say, please. To state the rationale why this motion is completely out of order, and that's why I'm rising on a point of order, Mr. Speaker. It would be absolutely wrong to strike what was said from the record. It goes without saying that those who do not learn from history are great. That's more. That's an order. One moment, please. I'm going to ask the clerk to come up and try to figure out what is going on here so that we can call on it. One sec. Order. 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 Uh, the Honourable Member for Charleswood, St. James, and Sinaboya, Headingley. I'm curious to see where you're going. Please uh, get to the point. I'm just. Speak, uh, but I appreciate your giving me the floor uh, to explain our rationale. It goes without saying that those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. What happened on Friday was shameful and brought embarrassment to this chamber. It was an ugly reminder of what survivors of the Holocaust know too well, that we must never forget. Deleting the text of the speaker's words from Hansard's would have... I'm going to have to interrupt. I'm, I see this. I'm afraid, I'm afraid, uh, I, I'm afraid it's getting into debate more than anything else. I'm, I'm afraid it's, it's debate more than anything else. And uh, I can't uh, point of order on something that's already been voted on. I'm just trying to make some sense out of it. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'll let the uh, honourable member go a little bit further, but I, I'm trying to figure out where he's going with this. I can't say that I disagree with what he's saying, but uh, I just want to, it's not a point of order. Deleting the text of the speaker's words from Hansard would have only one purpose, to try and forget what happened, to wash the record clean. Removing this from... I'm afraid this is, I'm afraid this is debate. The honourable member for Calgary knows Hill, and then we'll go over to... Or is it on the same item? No. Is this on the same item? Okay, the Honourable Member for Calgary Nose Hill. My colleague from uh, Winnipeg to continue to be heard, Mr. Speaker. I seek that. Are those opposed to the Honourable Member moving the motion? Will please say nay? Nay, we don't have that. The Honourable Member for Toronto, Danforth. Um, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I think that uh, we can all agree that what happened here on Friday was deeply hurtful. And I'm getting to it. My point of order is actually that as a Jewish Canadian, I've been very much hurt by what I've been hearing and seeing. Uh, the member.
when the, when the government house leader was mentioning that she was the descendant of Holocaust survivors, the member from Haldeman Norfolk said, the chickens have come home to roost. As a Jewish Canadian, that is so deeply hurtful to hear in his context. And I would ask that she apologize because it added to the pain we're feeling. Okay, I'm not sure where this is going. Honorable Deputy de la Prairie, the uh, de la Prairie. Uh, rappel, okay, c'est fini. Order, no, the Honorable over. Member for Regina Capel is rising on a point of order. Okay, is this on the same Why point of Okay. The Honourable Member for Winnipeg North. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, my colleague just expressed in a valid point of order that she was deeply offended by what a member from across the way stated during question period. It is definitely appropriate to ask for an apology, and we look to the Conservative Party to provide that member the opportunity to do the, the right thing and apologize, Mr. Speaker. That was a point of order. At least let's afford the member the opportunity to apologize for the offence that was... Is the Honourable Member ready? The Honourable Member, for, oh, the Honourable Member for uh, Kingston Frontenac uh, is uh, ready. Right. You got it, Mr. Line Speaker. Up, Mr. Speaker, like the uh, uh, member uh, who raised this, I too have Jewish uh, ancestors. My mother is Jewish. Our ancestral village uh, or town of Bialystok in Poland, 95% of the Jewish population was murdered during the Holocaust. Every time. The Trudeau, every time the Liberal government missteps in this way, they pull this stunt of coming out and saying, oh, look at us, we have some kind of background, and then they find some, some, some word that was said by somebody else and say, that person is anti-Semite. The fact is that the member from Haldeman Norfolk was referring to the chickens coming home to roost for this government that consistently abuses human rights issues for its own partisan purposes. Shame on all of them. The Honourable Member for Regina Capel is rising on a point of order. Mr. Speaker, for the sake of clarity, this is a very, very important issue. One that this House did not ask to debate, by the way, Mr. Okay. Speaker. The reason why these points were going back and forth, uh, forth is because of decisions that were made last week. And I think it's incredibly important that all of us understand the context in which this occurs in. So I genuinely hope that my colleagues will grant unanimous consent to my request to table the reporting structure of the Parliamentary Protective Services which states very clearly that it, quote, reports to the Commissioner of the RCMP on operational matters. That is the point that the line of questioning was making today, Mr. Speaker, about the government's responsibility to provide comprehensive vetting and background checks. I've got those two documents, including the Memorandum of Understanding, signed between the Speaker of the House of Commons, the Speaker of the Senate, and the Minister of Public Safety and the Commissioner of the RCMP. I'd like to table these two documents so that members can know what they're talking about when they're trying to run cover for this Prime Minister. All those opposed to the Honourable Member moving the motion will please say nay. Nay, we don't have... We have a... The, uh, the Honourable Member for South Surrey, White Rock, is rising on, on a, a point of order. point of order, Mr. Speaker. On a separate point of order, while well, our member uh, was speaking, a member of Jewish heritage, the member for Kingston the Islands used unparliamentary language again against one of our members, swearing at one of our members who's trying to make a point, a legitimate point, about a very difficult and sensitive matter, particularly those of Jewish heritage. He should apologize again. The Honourable uh, Member for Kingston the Islands is rising. I do, I do apologize for, sh for saying shame on the member uh, from Regina Capel. The Honourable Member, please. Uh, yeah, Mr. Speaker, I heard the utterance from that member. It included an expletive that was not included in his apology. Yeah. The government House Leader turned around and looked at him when he, sh when he said it. She knows he said it. He knows he said it. His apology was not addressing the point raised by the official opposition whip. And what, what we'll do, there's a he said, she said, and of course, I rely on the honourable members for what goes on. We're going to check the blues the, uh, and to see what we've Got, and then come back to the house should we see fit. So, 
all set. I'm sorry, what was that?